from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I am Father Vijay Amirtharaj. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from St. Mary Magdalene Parish in Fredericton, New Brunswick. The Mass is offered for the parishioners and their priests, Father Bill Brennan and Father Peter Osborne for victims of violence and human trafficking and the preservation of life for the unborn. Also, for the people of Ukraine who are suffering from the devastating effects of this terrible war. The parishioners of St. Mary Magdalene Parish have been faithful supporters of the daily TV Mass since we first began broadcasting. On behalf of all who are gathered for this sacred celebration, we thank the parishioners of St. Mary Magdalene Parish for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and pray for God's mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, restorer and lover of innocence, direct our hearts of your servants toward yourself that those you have set free from the darkness of unbelief may never stray from the light of your truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Certain individuals came down from Judea and were teaching the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And after Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and debate with them, Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go up to Jerusalem to discuss this question with the apostles and the elders. So they were sent on their way by the church, and as they passed through both Phoenicia and Samaria, they reported the conversation the conversion of the Gentiles, and brought great joy to all the believers. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they reported all that God had done with them. But some believers who belonged to the sect of the Pharisees stood up and said, it is necessary for them to be circumcised and ordered to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and the elders met together to consider this matter. The word of the Lord. Thanks. So 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. When the hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father, Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Mark Twain, a famous American author and humorist who lived in late 1800, used to tell a story that he put a dog and a cat in a cage together as an experiment to see if they could get along. They did. So he put in a bird, a pig, and a goat. They too got along fine after a few adjustments. Then he put in a Baptist a Presbyterian, and a Catholic, and hell broke loose. Mark Twain did not even bother putting together a Christian, a Muslim, and a Hindu that was unthinkable in his days. In today's world, however, it has become obvious that Christians live in the same cage in the same city, in the same world, with people of other religions and people without any religion. Sisters and brothers, we have heard phrases like unity is strength, or united we stand, divided we fall. Yet 
we know from our lived experiences that there are divisions among the human family at so many levels. And our readings today focus on the issues of division and unity. Our first reading speaks of the tensions and the divisions that existed in the early church community. There was a conflict over circumcision, one of the ancient traditions. The original Jewish converts were reluctant to let go of the traditions and wanted them to be imposed on others. For Paul, the issue was not about ritual or tradition, but about adding any condition to faith in Jesus. Otherwise, the salvation that Jesus offered would become conditional rather than absolute. The beautiful image of the vine and its branches in today's gospel reading continues on the theme of unity and the need for a branch to be connected and united to the vine to survive and to bear fruit. Like a branch, only if we are united and connected to the Lord, we believers can bear fruit. For Jesus said, cut off from me, you can do nothing. St. Paul, in his letter to the Colossians, chapter 1, 18, says, Jesus is the head of the body, the church. He is the head, and we, the bodily members. We cannot be divided from the head and retain any life at all. Sisters and brothers, if we are to be honest with ourselves, we will realize that conservatism and liberalism are not only part of our political landscape of today, but it is also part of our church landscape today. Pope Francis's pastoral approach to welcome ambiguity and diversity has wrangled some traditionalists who think that clear rules are better than patient discernment for deciding who is in or out of the church. The Acts of the Apostles presents to us the tensions and conflicts from which the church was born. Its real witness to the world was not that it was perfect, but its members stayed together and worked out their differences with trust in the risen Lord. We are called today to do the same. We are called to first of all acknowledge that there are differences among the members of the body of Christ today. And we are called to work out and to better ourselves to resolve those differences that we have with trust in the risen Lord. And we are called to continue to bear witness to the life and love of our risen Christ in our world today. And so we pray for that grace to be those true witnesses of God and our Lord Jesus Christ in our world. Amen. And we now take a moment to offer our prayers and petitions to God with faith. And we pray for all those in the daily TV Mass community. And we especially pray for all young people called to live life to the fullest. May they see in Mary's life the way to listen, the depth of discernment, the courage that the faith generates, and the dedication to service. 
For this we pray to the Lord. For all of us participating in this Mass, that we may always draw strength from the Lord Jesus Christ, the true vine. For this we pray to the Lord. For all those who are sick and for those who live in fear and anxiety, for them we pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear us and hear our prayers and answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual food. Bless be God. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and he ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people excels in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and he entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Amen. 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our bishop, and all the clergy and the people you have gathered. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that he should enter on the roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Thirteen.